Now, let's talk about the copy algorithm. Okay? Now, STL Demo01 used a for loop to output the elements of a vector container. Now, the STL provides a convenient way to output the elements of a container with the help of a function copy. So, the function copy, okay, or the copy function, is provided as part of the generic algorithms of the STL and can be used with any container type as well as arrays. Now, because we frequently need to output the elements of a container, before continuing with our discussion of containers, let us describe this function. Okay? Now, the function copy does more than output the elements of a container. So, in general, it allows us to copy the elements from one place to another. So, for example, to output the elements of a vector or to copy the elements of a vector into another vector, we can use the function copy. So, the prototype of the function template is as follows here. So, template, you've got the class input iterator, class output iterator, output ITR copy, and so on. Okay? Now, the parameter first one, okay, the parameter first one specifies the position from which to begin copying the elements. The parameter last specifies the end, okay, of position or the end position. Okay? Next would be the parameter first two, we've got first two here, specifies where to copy the elements. So, therefore, the parameters first one and the last specify the source and the parameter first two specifies the destination. Note that the elements within the range first and then last minus one are copied. Okay? So, the definition of the function template copy is contained in the header file algorithm. So, you have to include sharp include algorithm. Okay? So, the function copy works as follows. So, consider the following statement here. Okay? You've got int and then int array. Okay, you've got an empty array here. So, the size automatically determines. And the values are 5, 6, 8, 3, 40, 36, 98, 29, and 75. And then you've got vector int backlist 9. So, this statement in line 1 creates an array int array of nine components that is int array okay so you'll have this value of 5 6 8 3 40 36 98 29 and 75 now here int array 0 is 5 okay so this is index 0 index 1 index 2 and so on okay now the statement in line 2 creates an empty container of nine components of type vector and the element type int. Recall that the array name is int array. Okay, this is actually a pointer and container the base address of the array, the array. Okay? So therefore, int array points to the first component of the array. Int array plus 1 points to the second component. Int array plus 2 points to the next and so on. Okay? Now consider the statement on line 3. So you've got copy int array int array plus 9 backlist.begin. Okay? Now this statement copies the elements starting at the location int array which is the first component of the array int array until int array plus 9 minus 1. That is int array plus 8. Okay? which is the last element of the array int array into the container backlist. So take note that here, first one, take note, you've got first one on our uh, template or syntax. Last is int array plus nine. And first two is backlist.begin. So after the statement in line three executes. Next, consider the statement. Okay, so copy int array plus 1, int array plus 9, and then int array. So that is our line 5 here. Now here, first one is int array plus 1. 
Okay, you've got your first one there. And then first two is int array plus nine. Okay. So the first one is int array plus one. That is first one points to the location of the second element in the array int array. And the last is, as mentioned earlier, int array plus nine. So also the first two is int array. That is first two points to the location of the first element of the array in the int array. So therefore, the second array element is copied into the first array component. The third array element into the second array component and so on. So after the statement in line 5 executes, so notice that the elements of the array in the int array are shifted to the left by one position. Okay? Now, suppose that vec list is as in line 4. Okay? Consider the statement. Something like on line 7. So, copy vec list dot r begin a plus 2 vec list dot r end and then vec list dot r begin. Okay? So, r line 7. Now, recall that the function r begin reverse begin returns a pointer to the last element into a container. So, it is used to process the elements of a container in reverse. So, therefore, the backlist that r begin plus 2, okay, this one, returns a pointer to the third to last element into the container backlist. So, similarly, the function rend or reverse and returns a pointer to the first element of a container. The previous statement shifts the elements of the container backlist to the right by two positions. So after the statement in line 7 executes, the container backlist is as follows. So the value of backlist would be 5, 6, 5, 6, and then 8, 3, 40, 36, and 90. All right. Now, I want you to see video demo 2, okay, STL demo 02. It shows the effect of the preceding statement using C++ program. So, before discussing uh, this uh, STL demo 02, okay, so let us describe a special type of iterator called Ostream iterators, which work well with a function copy to copy the elements of a container to an output device. Okay? Now, Ostream iterator and the function copy. One way to output the contents of a container is to use a for loop, right? And the function begin to initialize the for loop control variable and to use the function end to set the limit. Now, alternatively, the function copy can be used to output the elements of a container. In this case, an iterator of type Ostream specifies the destination. Ostream iterators are discussed in detail later in this video. Okay? When we create an iterator of type Ostream, we also specify the type of element the iterator will output. All right, so um, let us evaluate the following codes here. So the following statement illustrates how to create an Ostream iterator of type int. Okay, so Ostream iterator int. You've got the screen C out. Okay, assuming that this is on line A. Now this statement creates screen to be an Ostream iterator with the element type int. The iterator screen has two arguments, the object C out and the space. Okay. Thus, the iterator screen is initialized using the object C out. And when this iterator outputs the elements, they are separated by space. Okay. Now consider letter B here. Okay. So the statement copy int array 
int array plus 9 and then screen. It outputs the elements of the int array on the screen. Okay, so whatever the values are on the int array, it will be displayed on the screen. So similarly, the statement copy vectorlist.begin, vectorlist.end, and then the screen, it outputs the elements of the container vectorlist on the screen. Okay? Now, we will frequently use the function copy to output the elements of a container by using an OStream operator. So also, until we discuss OStream iterators in detail, we will use statements similar to the statement in line A to create an OStream iterator. So of course, we can directly specify an OStream iterator in the function copy. For example, the statement shown previously, okay, so copy vectorlist.begin, vectorlist.end, and then screen. This is equivalent to letter E. So D and E are the same. They are equivalent. Okay? And finally, the statement copy vectorlist.begin, vectorlist.end, ostrim iterator, int C out. Okay? It outputs the elements of backlist with a comma and space between them. Okay? Now, I want you to see STL Demo 03, which illustrates how to use the function copy and an OSTREAM iterator in the program. Now, let's move on to the sequence container deck. So this section describes deck sequence container. So the term deck stands for double-ended queue. So deck containers are implemented as dynamic arrays in such a way that the elements can be inserted at both ends. Thus, a deck can expand in either direction. So elements can be inserted in the middle. Okay, Inserting elements at the beginning or at the end is fast. Inserting elements in the middle, however, is time consuming because the elements in the queue needed to be shifted. All right. Now, the name of the class defining the deck container is, of course, deck. Okay. The definition of the class deck and the functions to implement various operations on a deck object are also contained in the header file deck. Okay. So, therefore, to use deck container in a program, the program must include the following statement now, sharp include deck. Okay. The class deck contains several constructors. Thus, a deck object can be initialized in various ways when it is declared as described in table 4-7 here. Okay? So, the statement deck and then the element type say DE, DEQ, okay, also deck. So, creates an empty deck container without any elements. If you are given something like deck, element type, deck, and then other deck, it creates a deck container, DEQ, and initializes DEQ to the elements of other deck. DEQ and other DEQ or deck are of the same type. Okay, so almost similar to our previous discussion. Now, if you are given deck element type, DEQ, and then size, it creates a deck container, DEQ, of size, size. So, DEQ is initialized using the default constructor. So, next would be deck element type, DEQ, and then N element. So, it creates a deck container, DEQ of size N. DEQ is initialized using N copies of the element LM. Next would be deck element type begin and end so it creates a deck container deq deq is initialized to the elements in the range begin and end that is all elements in the range begin until end minus one so in addition to the operations that are common to all containers table 4-8 describes the operation that can be used to manipulate the elements of a deck container so the name of the function implementing the operations is shown in bold. Okay. Now the statement also show how to use a particular function. 
Now, suppose that the EQ here or deck is a deck container. So something like if you are given the EQ that assign N and then the element, it means assign N copies of elements. The EQ that assign begin and end assigns the elements in the range begin and then end minus one. The EQ that push underscore front and then the element, it inserts element at the beginning of the DEQ. And then the EQ that pop front, it removes the first element from the DEQ. Okay? The EQ at 80 and then the index, it returns the element at the position specified by the index. So take note again, the starting position is at index 0. So DEQ index, it returns the element at the position specified by the index. And then DEQ.front, it returns the first element. It does not check whether the container is empty or not. Okay? And DEQ.back, it returns the last element. Again, it does not check whether the container is empty. Now, I want you to see video demo, STL demo 04. It illustrates how to use the function copy and an on-stream iterator in a program. Iterators. So STL demo 02 through STL demo 04 further clarify that iterators are quite important to efficiently process the elements of a container. Let us discuss iterators in some detail. Iterators work just like pointers. In general, an iterator points to the elements of a container. Okay, so that is sequence or associative. Thus, with the help of iterators, we can successively access each element of a container. So the two most common operations on iterators are the plus plus, that means it is an increment operator, and the asterisk, the dereferencing operator. Suppose that CNT LTR is an iterator into a container okay so the first one plus plus cnt itr here advances cnt itr so that it points to the next element in the container the next statement here asterisk cnt ltr returns the value of the element of the container pointed to by cnt ltr now let's talk about the iterators there are five types of iterators so input iterators output iterators forward iterators bidirectional iterators and random access iterators so in the next few sections we describe these iterators so let's start with the first one input iterators so input iterators with read access step forward element by element and so return the values element by element. So these iterators are provided for reading data from an input stream. Okay? Now suppose input iterator is an input iterator. Okay? The variable input iterator here is an input iterator. So figure or table 4 does 9 here describes the operations on input iterator. So if you are given asterisk input iterator, this means gives access to the element to which input iterator points. So take note that this is a dereferencing operator. Now if you are given input iterator, okay, and then pointing to the member, it gives access to the member of the element. Plus plus input iterator moves forward, returns the new position. This is pre-incremental. And input iterator plus plus is a post increment okay now in here input one okay input it1 is equals to input it2 you are comparing these two values here so returns true if the two iterators are the same and false otherwise now the next one input it1 is not equals to input it2 it returns true if the two iterators are not the same and false otherwise Okay, now the type input iterator copies the 
iterators. So the next one is output iterators. So output iterators with write access step forward element by element, these iterators are typically used for writing data to an output stream. Okay? Now, suppose output iterator here is an output iterator. So this table for the stand describes the operations on the output iterator. So for example, you are given the referencing output iterator equals value. It writes the value at the position specified by the output iterator. Plus plus output iterator moves forward, returns the new position. This is pre-increment. And this one here is a post increment. Okay? Type output iterator, it copies the iterators. So output iterators cannot be used to iterate over a range twice. Okay? Now, thus, if we write data at the same position twice, there is no guarantee that the new value will replace the old value. Next is the forward iterators. Forward iterators combine all the functionality of input iterators and almost all of the functionality of output iterators. Now, suppose that we have a forward iterator here. Okay, is a forward iterator. So, table 4 11 describes the operations on forward iterator. So, it's just the same thing as the previous examples. Now, for bidirectional iterators, bidirectional iterators are forward iterators that can also iterate backward over the elements. So, bidirectional iterators can be used only with containers of type vector, deck, or list. It also includes set, multi set, map, and multi map. Suppose bidirectional iterator is a bidirectional iterator. So the operations defined for forward iterators are also applicable to bidirectional iterators. So to step backward, the decrement operations are also defined for bidirectional iterator. Okay? This is pre-decrement and you've got the post-decrement bidirectional iterator minus minus. Okay, so this table here shows additional iterators or operations on bidirectional iterators. So next would be random access iterator. So random access iterators are bidirectional iterators that can randomly process the elements of a container. These iterators can be used with containers of type vector, tech, string, and arrays. So the operations defined for bidirectional iterators, for example, okay, so the tables uh, for the 11 presented earlier and for the 12 are also applicable to random access iterators. So table for the 13 describes just the additional operations that are defined for random access iterators. Now suppose our access iterator here is a random access iterator. Now that you know the different types of iterators, next we describe how to declare an iterator to a container. Okay, so that is type def iterator. Every container, sequence, or associative contains a type def iterator. Thus, an iterator into a container is declared using type def iterator. For example, so the statement vector int iterator int vec iter it declares int vec iter to be an iterator into a vector container of type int. So moreover, the iterator int vec iter can be used on any vector int, but not on any other container such as vector double, vector string, and def. So because iterator is a type def defined inside a container that is a class such as vector we must use the appropriate container name. So container element type and the scope resolution operator to use the type def iterator. Okay? 
Now, because an iterator works like a pointer, with the help of an iterator into a container and the dereferencing operator, okay, asterisk, we can modify the elements of the container. However, if a container is declared as constant, then we must prevent the iterator from modifying the elements of the container, especially accidentally. Okay? So, to handle the situation, every container contains another type def const iterator. So, for example, so the statement vector int const iterator and then int const vec. Okay? It declares int const vec lt to be an iterator into a vector container whose elements are of type integer. So the iterator in const vec lt is used to process the elements of those vector containers that are declared as constant vector containers of type vector. An iterator of type const iterator is a read-only iterator. Type def reverse iterator. So every container also contains a type def reverse iterator. So an iterator is used on this type is used to iterate through the elements of a container in reverse. Okay? You also have the type def const reverse iterator. So an iterator of this type is a read only iterator and is used to iterate through the elements of a container in reverse. Okay? It is required if the container is declared as const and we need to reiterate or to iterate through the elements of the container in reverse. So in addition to the previous four type def, several other type defs are common to all containers. So table 4-14 here describes some of them. Stream iterators. Another useful set of iterators is stream iterators. So is stream iterators and ostream iterators. So this section describes both types of iterators. So let's start with stream iterators. The stream iterator is used to input data into a program from an input stream. The class is stream iterator contains the definition of an input stream iterator. So the general syntax to use an stream iterator is as follows. So stream iterator, the type, okay? So is identifier, stream end, okay? So where type is either a built-in type or a user-defined class type for which an input iterator is defined. So the identifier is identifier Okay, is initialized using the constructor whose argument is either an stream class object such as cin okay, or any publicly defined stream subtype such as if stream. Next would be the ostream iterators. The ostream iterators are used to output data from a program into an output stream. Okay? So these iterators were defined earlier on this video. So we reviewed them here for the sake of completeness. The class ostream iterator contains the definition of an output stream iterator. So the general syntax to use an ostream iterator is as follows. Okay? So you've got class ostream iterator. Okay? And then type os identifier and then ostream and okay or it could be ostream iterator type os identifier ostream you've got character okay as pointer and then delimit so where type is either a built-in type or a user-defined class type for which an output iterator is defined so the identifier OS identifier is initialized using constructor whose argument is either an OSTREAM class object such as Cout or any publicly defined 
Ostrim subtype such as Offstream. Now in the second form, okay, so an Ostrim iterator by using the second argument, the limit, okay, of the initializing constructor, we can specify a character separating the output. Now we have reached the end of this of video lecture. Now let's summarize our discussion. So we've talked about STL and STL provides class templates. Okay, so process, lists, stacks, and views. There are three main components of STL. So you've got containers, iterators, and algorithms. STL containers are class templates. So iterators step through the elements of a container. And then algorithm is used to manipulate the elements in a container. Now, the main categories of container includes sequence containers, associative uh, containers, and containers adapters. There are three predefined sequence containers. These are vector, deck, and list. We use the copy algorithm, which copies elements in a given range to another place. And function copy using an Ostrim iterator can output the elements of a container. Now, there are five categories of iterators. You've got input, output, forward, bidirectional, and random access iterator. So that's the end of this video lecture about standard template library. Okay, see you on the next video. Have a great day.